Hello everyone, welcome to another amazing video. If you enjoy the content, I ask that you subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss the upcoming parts and new videos. Now, without further ado, let's get into today's video. Are you ready? Let's go. The story begins with a huge traffic jam in the city streets. A sign informs that the road ahead is closed and it would be kind if everyone changed their routes. Traffic was at a standstill, but the green lights start to appear. At that moment, Ming He appears speeding on his motorcycle. He realizes that he passed two signals and both turned green as he approached. Although happy about it, he is also frustrated that he has such a good ability, but he can't use it in battle. He clenches his teeth, upset about this. He continues on his way, and every signal he passes turns green, thus clearing the way for him. Ming He then closes his eyes and continues on his way. Earlier that same day, the super admission test conference for the academy was taking place. A man announces that all those students passed the written test, so now they will test their extraordinary talents. The examiner shows a crystal that will be responsible for classifying each student into which rank they will be placed. He explains that there are five possible ranks, from lowest to highest, white dust, blue spirit, purple soul, red honor, and black saint. All students position themselves in front of the crystal to be evaluated. Ming, he then looks to the side and sees a beautiful girl smiling at him, wishing him good luck. The examiner then asks everyone to touch their respective crystals and warns in advance that the academy only accepts students who achieve at least the blue spirit rank. In other words, anyone classified as white dust, which is the lowest rank, will not be approved. Ming, he then places his hand on the crystal, full of confidence, but he is frustrated to see the result that came out. His rank was classified as white dust, so he was not accepted. The protagonist then looks to the side to see the results of the other students and realizes that four of the students got the blue spirit rank and one student got the purple soul rank. Only Ming He got white dust, which is indeed the worst possible rank. The other students watch the test results from afar. Some students start mocking Ming He, saying that he is part of a small number of people with an extraordinary talent, which is white dust. They say it is an invisible talent. Another student also mocks him, asking what Mr. White Dust said earlier about getting the highest rank. Mingyi continued at that moment, unable to believe that he had gotten the lowest possible rank, while most students mocked him. One of the students even says that, how will Mingyi confess to the most beautiful girl on campus now, since he got the White Dust rank, while Lu Quan got the Purple Soul rank? Lu Quan is sad to see all the students making fun of Mingyi and also sad that he was not approved in the academy because of the white dust rank. Back to the present, Ming He continues his motorcycle journey, dodging all the trucks along the way, imagining that luck is a damn thing. Throughout his journey, he drives at full speed, while imagining that power is completely useless. The protagonist then becomes serious, and imagines how he will face the monsters that appear with this power, knowing that these monsters could easily destroy a building. Ming He then, still sad, just continues his way. He then, still riding his motorcycle, passes under some giant bones. Ming He then looks up and sees something shining in the sky. He looks more closely to understand what it was and realizes that the shine in the sky was a comet, which by the way approached so much that it was passing close to him. Ming He gives a slight smile and thinks that not even bullets can hit him because of the luck he has. So what are the chances of a comet hitting him in such a big world like that? He then, driving at full speed begins to realize that the shine of that comet was getting brighter and brighter, indicating that it was getting closer and closer to him. He then can't believe it, looking towards the comet. His eyes widened as he watched the comet, which by that moment was just a few meters away from him. The comet then hits ming He directly, causing huge destruction at the site. A huge dust cloud rises at the impact site of that comet. The dust gradually dissipates until we see ming He lying in the middle of all that dust, while a bubble begins to fly towards him. It was a bubble with a different aspect, shining brightly. This bubble then goes to ming He's chest and begins to enter his body. This bubble was like a system that was viewing ming He's stats. The system then discovers that ming He's extraordinary power is luck and that his devour attribute is ineffective and his parasite attribute is ineffective. Basically, ming He only had the luck attribute at maximum while his other attributes were zero. A goddess then appears inside this bubble carefully evaluating all of ming He's information. The goddess's system identifies that enemies are approaching. The best choice then was to identify a host and after that, coexist with him. The goddess then opens the protagonist's soul while the integration was being completed. Now she delves deeper into his knowledge. 
The goddess then realizes that this host has no fighting abilities, so he would easily die in combat. That said, the goddess grants him extraordinary combat powers. Ming He then feels a powerful energy overflowing through his hands. He then clenches his fist with huge energy overflowing throughout his body. He has just gained the mysterious dark fists. The goddess's system now begins to assess the protagonist's talent rank. A mysterious red energy begins to envelop Ming He's entire body. His talent rank is now red honor. The goddess then gives a slight smile while seeing all the energy that the protagonist has just received and says that, at least now, he can be considered a fighter. Some time passes, and we see a heart rate monitor. Ming-He is unconscious with an oxygen mask. Ming-He is lying with several wires connected to his body. One of the doctors informs the nurse that Ming-He's body is in good condition, but unfortunately, because of the trauma he had, he will probably be in a coma for a long time. The nurse asks the doctor to rest assured that she will take very good care of him. At this moment, a nurse opens the door calling for Dr. Zhao. She tells him that an astronomy group sent a small sample of the comet's blood in the hope that it could help them test it. The doctor then says it's okay, and everyone leaves the room, leaving Ming He resting alone in that dark room. Some days pass, and a girl brings flowers to Ming He who is still in a coma. It was Lu Quan, holding the flowers, sad to see Ming He in that situation, and she was also holding a letter. A month then passes, and the group of students who mocked Ming He in the evaluation visit him in the hospital. One of the students regrets saying that all he wanted to be was extraordinary, Another student mocks, saying that Ming He took the teasing too seriously. The blonde student asks why Ming He took it personally, since even with emotions running high, he should be more cautious. The blonde student then looks to the side and notices something. He sees that bouquet of flowers and that there was a pink letter in it. He decides to take the letter to see what was inside, while another student says that Ming He needs to get better soon so he can look for a good job, since hospital bills are usually very expensive and he even heard that Ming-He's sister is in several jobs to be able to pay these bills. The blonde student then takes the letter in his hands and realizes that the letter came from Lu Quan and that she even responded to Ming-He's confession. The blonde student is frustrated, imagining how a beautiful girl like her responded to the confession of a jerk like Ming-He, especially since it's hard to say if he will really come out of that coma. The student then, with a terrifying look, takes and tears the entire letter. So if ming -He comes out of the coma, he will never know that he once received it. One year passes, and the city remains as calm as ever. Suddenly, a noise comes from the sewers. A huge hand starts to lift the sewer lid to get out. A gigantic cockroach climbs to the surface. At that moment, the city sirens start to wail, announcing that a huge number of mutants have emerged in the city on the southwest side, and the entire population needs to evacuate urgently. The hospital sirens then start to wail, all doctors and nurses panic as the sirens are not a good sign. All nurses, doctors, and patients start running desperately towards the exit, while one of the nurses runs in the opposite direction. The security guard, also desperate, shouts for Dr. Zhao to flee immediately. The doctor is completely shocked by the situation. The nurse who ran in the opposite direction of the exit keeps running with all her might. She is extremely worried, as one of the students is in a coma in room 409, and he was left behind. She thinks that even if he never wakes up again, he should not be left behind in that way, with so many monsters invading the hospital. She then heads to Ming He's room, and at that moment, one of the giant cockroaches appears on the ceiling right behind her. She then opens the door to the room, desperate with the whole situation. Ming He was still with his eyes closed. The nurse then grabs Ming He's arm and shakes it in hopes of waking him up so that both can escape from there. At that moment, she is startled when she looks ahead. She then sees, through the window's reflection, that one of the giant cockroaches was behind her. She is completely terrified as the giant cockroach licks her face with its tongue. The nurse is in shock while still holding ming -He's arm. The cockroach is clinging to her, saying how delicious that nurse must be. At that moment, ming -He clenches his fists tightly and delivers a powerful punch to the cockroach, causing a huge explosion at the location. ming -He remains with his eyes closed. Now he is awake, full of energy, as he removes all those cables connected to his body, his fist still overflowing with energy after that punch to the mutant cockroach. The protagonist then looks seriously at the nurse. At that very moment, a huge horde of giant cockroaches was climbing the hospital, when a huge explosion was caused by Mingy's punch. Mingy's punch completely destroyed the top part of the cockroach, and it also destroyed three layers of walls of the hospital. The nurse is crouched down, scared by everything. The rest of the cockroach then kneels and falls to the ground lifeless, while Ming He stands tall, full of energy. 
The nurse was already crying a lot at that moment, scared of the cockroach. But Ming He asks her not to worry, as the mutant cockroach was already dead. Ming, he then extends his hand and asks if the nurse can stand up. Ming, he takes the opportunity to thank Nurse Song for taking care of him for so long while he was unconscious. Nurse Song then sits on the bed still scared and thanks Ming He for saving her, and even asks when he woke up. Ming, he then changes the subject, asking if they were not in Nancheng Hospital, and he also asks how so many mutant cockroaches ended up there. Nurse Song then says that the superiors informed that contaminated fluid entered the sewers, and after that, numerous mutant parasites appeared throughout the city. Ming, he then asks what happened to the people living near the hospital. The nurse, still in tears, replies that probably the population is being evacuated to a safe place. The nurse also says that she does not know more details, as she was worried about Ming He and ended up running towards his room, separating from the others. Nurse Song also says that she was very worried that a mutant cockroach had reached Ming He's room and was trying to devour him. Ming He then smiles, thanking the nurse for not abandoning him. The nurse, still worried, says she was just doing her job as a nurse, but she still had a doubt if he was just a student or not. After all, how could a student like him kill a mutant cockroach of that size with just one punch? Ming, he then becomes embarrassed and starts to think that he trained combat techniques for a whole year. Nurse Song is confused to see him with that expression. Ming Yi then says they should hurry and get out of there to the evacuation group. At that moment, the hospital was already completely infested with mutant cockroaches. He then starts walking towards one of the walls that broke from his punch. He sees numerous mutant cockroaches in that corridor. Ming He then asks Nurse Song to please wait there for a moment. The mutant cockroaches, hungry, rush towards Ming He as soon as they spot him. Ming He then becomes serious, clenches his fist tightly, and waits for the cockroaches to get closer to him. And when they get close enough, he delivers a powerful punch that disintegrates several cockroaches at once. The cockroaches that were not hit become afraid of that enormous power. However, Ming He starts running at full speed towards them, delivering a strong punch to the face of one cockroach and to another mutant cockroach, his punch makes a hole in its belly. As he approaches another mutant cockroach, he gathers energy in his fist and delivers a punch that completely disintegrates the cockroach's belly, splitting it in half. Ming Yi then is startled to look back and see Nurse Song screaming because one of the cockroaches was flying towards her. Ming he then sees a pot with a green liquid on the table. He then runs to the table and punches it, making all the objects fly. He looks at the pot and reads that the green liquid is sulfuric acid. Ming He then punches the flask, destroying it and making the sulfuric acid fly onto his fist, making the acid completely surround his hand. At that moment, the cockroach was already close to devouring the nurse, so Ming He yells acid fist and completely explodes the cockroach's head with his wind blast mixed with sulfuric acid. Ming He, at that moment, has an intense green glow in his hand after breaking the sulfuric acid on it. Ming He then starts looking at his fist with that green glow and thinks that he practiced this technique countless times in his head, but he had never tested if it really would work. The nurse is surprised to see that and asks if Ming He's superpower is directly related to his fist. Ming He then becomes embarrassed, saying that he was still a student who even failed the exam he had last year. Nurse Song can't believe it, asking if the examiners are blind. After all, with all that power he demonstrated so far, he could be considered a rank pyro superhuman at least. Ming He, upon hearing this, remembers the day of the exam when he took the test and got white dust as a rank. Ming He then looks at that place and asks how the cockroaches got so scared like that. After all, what fluid was able to leave them like that? The nurse then replies that, to make matters worse, there are not only cockroaches in the sewers, so there will probably be other different mutant monsters. The protagonist then becomes worried and asks if there might not be more sulfuric acid around there, as it would be very useful. After that, Still in the city, a bus was calmly traveling until two giant eyes appear under the bridge. Then, the bridge is destroyed right in front of the bus. The people inside the bus become desperate with what that could be. The entire bridge in front of the bus begins to collapse. The passengers panic when they see what was coming from below and start screaming that they were giant cockroaches. All the passengers start to panic. One of the passengers, also in panic, calls emergency services saying that a surreal number of monsters appeared on Nancheng Bridge and that he urgently requested support from superhumans. When one of the cockroaches was almost devouring people, a bullet goes through its head. The people then look outside and see smoke coming from a gun and also see a shiny emblem on the person's clothes. A superhuman gunslinger had just arrived to help them. The people then, completely frightened, 
look through the broken bus window and see that cockroach dead from the shot. The gunslinger then asks everyone to calm down, that he was a rank pyro superhuman, and he would take care of all those disgusting cockroaches. The gunslinger is then surrounded by several cockroaches, but he manages to shoot all of them in the head, while saying that no matter how many of them come at him, after all, his superpower is infinite ammunition. That said, all those cockroaches would go to hell. A cockroach then gets very close to the gunslinger, but he takes a huge leap and from up high, he starts shooting non-stop with his pistols, hitting the head of all the cockroaches. The gunslinger then falls back onto the bus since he had finished off all the cockroaches that were close by. However, he is startled to feel a horrifying presence behind him. The gunslinger then turns around and realizes he was facing a giant rat, extremely larger than all those cockroaches. Then, an explosion is caused on top of the bus where the two were. The bus passengers were in shock at that scene. They were facing that giant rat while it completely devoured the gunslinger's body. Panic only increased among them as all they could scream for was help. Returning then to the hospital, Nurse Song and Ming He are sneaking away from that place. The nurse still asks if they were followed by the monsters. Ming He replies that probably not, since no mutant cockroach attacked them so far. The nurse then gets scared looking ahead and sees the city bridge destroyed. The nurse then, worried, says that looking from there it seems like she's seeing the last bus that left the hospital right where the bridge is broken, so probably the people are in danger. At that moment, a phone near them rings, informing that there is an incident in the city of Nancheng. The phone also informs that a giant mutant rat appeared on the bridge, and that apparently the rank pyro superhuman, Twin Guns, is no longer alive. Ming, he then crouches down and picks up that phone while it still rings, saying that no registered superhuman is near the location. Ming, he then, picking up the phone, asks please to give him all the information about that giant rat, such as its powers, strength, and weakness. The phone then informs that the giant rat is weak against fire, but right after saying that, they ask who is the person speaking to them on the phone, if that person was even a superhuman. Ming, he then replies that he was just a student who failed the entrance exam for the superhuman school. The phone then starts shouting, asking if he is an idiot by any chance, since that demonic giant rat is a general rank monster. So, why was Ming He asking for that information, since he can't do anything about it? Ming He then starts walking, while the phone keeps shouting, saying that theoretical knowledge is useless, so Ming He should urgently seek shelter. Ming He then, with a serious look, says that the hospital staff took care of him for a year while he was unconscious, so Ming He cannot let them die that way. The giant rat, at that moment, was holding the huge bus in its hands. The giant rat then approaches with a demonic look while seeing the desperation of all the passengers. Ming He and Nurse Song watch from afar what that rat was doing and conclude that it was just playing with its prey. Ming He then stands up and asks Nurse Song to hide and not to leave there, no matter what happens. The nurse, also worried about him, asks if he really was going to confront the demonic rat. After all, he could be killed by the rat. Ming He then fixes his gaze on the nurse and smiles, asking if when a patient is in danger, the nurses just stand still and do nothing. Just as the nurses ran to help, Ming He will also do the same. The nurse then looks worriedly at Ming He, imagining that the worst could happen. Ming He then clenches his fist tightly and runs towards the giant rat, saying that he won't know the result if he doesn't try. The rat, which was devouring the bus, doesn't notice Ming He approaching, and then receives a powerful punch that makes it stop biting the bus immediately. Ming He, concerned about the situation he is in, thinks that an ordinary cockroach is the size of a thumb, and after mutation, they became the size of a human being. Ming He then starts to look at the giant rat's paws and says that the mutation of that rat was on another level. The mutation made the demonic rat grow to the size of a building. Still worried, Ming He imagines that with a giant body like that, if by chance its claws hit him head on, they would probably cut through to the bones tearing him apart. If that happens, Ming He won't be able to save those people anymore. The demonic rat then attacks Ming He with everything it has, who manages to dodge while thinking that rats by nature are extremely agile, so this would be a problem. The rat then runs, opening its mouth trying to devour Ming He whole. Ming He keeps running away while thinking that he cannot let the demonic rat even touch him, not even once. Ming He continues running away as fast as he can, imagining that he needs to get as far away from the bus as possible so that the rat follows him and the people are not in danger. The giant rat then tries to bite Ming He when he was on top of a car, but Ming He jumps at high speed, causing the giant rat to bite a car that was in its way. 
Ming-Hee takes advantage of the fact that the monster's mouth was busy biting that car and sees an opening to attack. Ming-Hee then punches the air, sending a powerful purple energy towards the giant rat. This energy hits the demonic rat with full force, causing a huge explosion. Ming-Hee then looks ahead after the explosion dissipates and realizes that the demonic rat was lying on the ground after the impact. Ming-Hee looks at the closed eyes of the giant rat and wonders if the rat fainted after receiving that powerful blow. Ming-Hee then starts walking towards the giant rat, wondering if he should deliver the final blow at that moment. As he walked towards the giant rat, he began to think that he should still be wary, since animals like rats are clever and tend to play dead to get out of a tight situation. Right after Ming, he thinks this, the rat opens its terrifying eyes. The rat then splits the car it was biting in half while tossing another car into the air with its enormous strength. The demonic rat then begins to destroy the entire area, causing Ming He to need to run at full speed to escape from that heap of cars falling from the sky, while still needing to flee from that giant rat with a thirst for blood. Ming He, as he flees, begins to think that he was not in a good situation. Apparently only the strength of his fists will not be enough to kill a general rank monster like that giant rat. Ming He then looks at an overturned car and sees its gasoline spilled on the ground. He then focuses and has a brilliant idea. Ming He then starts running next to a red car. The frenzied demonic rat destroys this car while Ming He changes direction going to the opposite side. Ming He was running in zigzag while the demonic rat followed him at all costs, trying to devour him. There comes a moment when the giant rat stops its pursuit while drooling heavily, wanting to devour Ming He. The demonic rat stopped because Ming He also stopped running. Ming He had lured the giant rat to that huge puddle of gasoline. The giant rat just stands there not understanding why ming He was standing still there. ming He then, with a confident look, takes out a lighter and throws it on the ground. At that moment, Nurse Song approaches the bus and asks Dr. Lin if everyone there is okay. Dr. Lin sees that it is Nurse Song and says he is glad to see that she is okay. Dr. Lin then says that he doesn't know if he hit his head or something, but he was seeing a superhuman fighting the demonic rat, and this superhuman is wearing the hospital patient's clothes. Is he imagining things? said Dr. Lin. At that moment, the lighter Ming he threw on the ground hits the gasoline leaking from the car and immediately causes a huge explosion that was seen by everyone near the bus. The fire was getting higher and higher. The demonic rat was completely on fire. The demonic rat tried desperately to put out the fire that covered its entire body except its head. The despair of the demonic rat was expressive. Ming he thinks that he did well to remember that during his conversation on the phone a little while ago, they informed that the weakness of the demonic rat was fire. Ming-He then puts his arm into the flames, saying that that intense fire will be part of his strength at that moment, and the flames will help him gain more power. Ming-He then with his fists on fire says that a filthy monster that lives in the sewers dared to come up to the city and had the audacity to hurt people. That filthy rat will now feel the taste of his fists, said Ming-He, while the demonic rat is completely panicked with nowhere to run since there was fire everywhere. Ming-He then attacks the demonic rat with his flaming fist, Ming He is full of confidence, while the demonic rat is completely desperate. The people on the bus are surprised by everything they are witnessing. Ming He then shouts, Fist of the burning flames, and completely disintegrates the demonic rat, as well as creates a huge trail of destruction with the impact of his blow. A nurse who witnessed all that starts shouting that Ming, he really managed to kill that demonic rat, and finally, everyone was safe. The same nurse, while shouting, asks if the boy who defeated the giant rat is indeed a high-ranking superhuman. And if so, why is he wearing hospital patient clothes from the hospital where they work? Another nurse asks if it wasn't the student who was in a coma in room 409 for a year. This nurse says she doesn't remember his name very well. At that moment, Nurse Song smiles and says that his name is Ming He and that he is a student who was rejected in the entrance exam of the superhuman school. Ming He, at that moment, was overflowing with confidence after defeating the giant rat. After all this, we now move to the command post. A general contacts Lu Qian, saying that it is no longer necessary for her to go to the site, as that general-ranked monster has been killed. Lu Qian then stops moving, saying that the news was great, as probably everyone is okay with the monster dead. The barracks general replies that yes, someone went to the site and helped everyone by defeating the giant rat. Lucian then asks who was responsible for killing the general-ranked giant rat. She would like to personally thank the person who managed to kill it. The barracks general, who by the way has a wonderful body, replies that she has no information about the person responsible for such an achievement, as it seems that it was an unregistered superhuman 
and probably not the rude student she has in mind. That said, probably another strong superhuman must have run there to help. The barracks general still asks if they can't find the source of that contamination yet. If they don't find it soon, she fears that in the future, there will be many more creatures like that one. So at the moment, all that can be done is to evacuate everyone in Nanchung and only then quarantine the affected areas. After the fight, everyone went to the rescue station. Nurse Song is tending to Ming He's arm wounds, commenting that he was amazing and that without a doubt if it weren't for him, the people on the bus would not have survived. Ming He then smiles shyly after hearing that. At that moment, a girl approaches the guards, shouting that her brother is still inside the hospital in a coma. The guard informs her that, unfortunately, he cannot let her in as the area is isolated. The guard then explains that they have already evacuated and quarantined Nancheng Hospital. At that moment, only superhumans are authorized to enter as it was very dangerous. The girl, crying, says she doesn't care about any of that, as her brother is there and she needs to save him. The girl, still desperate, pleads with the guard to let her in, saying her brother is just a poor kid, still only a teenager, who had to live in a coma for a whole year in a hospital. She says he's still unconscious and hasn't woken up yet. Ming, he just watches her saying all that. The girl, still crying heavily, says her brother's name is Ming He and that he's a good boy, so she doesn't believe anything bad could have happened to him, especially since he's so young. She tells the guard that Ming He hasn't even held a girl's hand until now, so if he dies now, it would be too sad. Ming He, beside her, remains shocked hearing all that from his sister. The girl, then desperate, puts her hands on her head and asks her brother to wait for her, that she will save him. She takes a deep breath and says she will save Ming He, even if it costs her her life, and if he dies, she will die with him. Ming He, beside her watching all that drama, can't believe it. Ming He then stands up and walks to his sister. She looks at him closely to make sure she isn't seeing things, and then jumps into his chest, grabbing him and screaming happily that Ming He finally woke up. She, emotional, shouts that, as the older sister, she was very worried about him. She then, with a tearful voice, says it was great, simply great. Ming He looks sad looking at her and starts to remember last year, his sister helping him in the hospital, adjusting the devices he was intubated with. She even took his hand and said she finally found another job, since now she'll have to work at night too. And because of that, she won't be able to visit him regularly. She, still crying, tells him not to worry, that even if he never wakes up again, she will always visit him for the rest of her life, even if she gets so old that she needs a cane to walk. Ming He then hugs his sister tightly and apologizes for making her worry, but now he's awake. Ming, he then looks at his sister crying and thanks her for the hard work she gave him that year. She starts to cry even more. Ming He then goes back to his apartment. He just woke up. Ming He thinks he should rest in his bed, as it's been a long time since he slept in his house. He then looks at the bedside table and sees breakfast prepared, along with a letter his sister wrote, saying she has already gone to work, as the hospital bills were not fully paid. She also says that because of this, she won't be able to spend as much time with him, but he should stay home and rest until he finally recovers. Ming He, sitting on his bed, thinks he didn't know the hospital bills would be so high in just a year. Ming He starts to reflect that his sister is working three jobs and that because of that, she looks paler than a patient. Ming He, while eating his breakfast, thinks that now he needs to make a lot of money to give his sister a better life, so she won't have to work so much. Ming He then turns around and hears on the television that the government is offering a reward of 50 million yuan to anyone who has at least a clue about the source of the polluted fluid that created those mutant monsters. Ming He then runs in front of the television and says that's exactly what he's looking for. The report also says that for now, each mutant cockroach taken down will have a reward of 3,000 and the giant demonic rat is worth at least 5 million. Ming He continues to eat his breakfast while saying that apparently, this issue has not been resolved yet and so they are giving away a lot of money just for some information about the source of the pollution. At least with that, he will be able to pay all the hospital bills, and there will still be money left over for him to buy a new house for him and his sister to live in. He also thinks that on top of all that, there will still be money left over to buy a lot of clothes and makeup for his sister. Ming He then starts to remember the mutant cockroach, and wonders where the source of that polluted fluid might be. He then remembers the fight against the demonic rat, and imagines he will have to investigate further to check on it. Even if he doesn't find any evidence of the source of the polluted fluid, he can at least go defeat the mutant monsters, gaining combat experience and collecting the reward from the government. Ming He then decides to go to the rewards hall. Upon arriving, he is greeted by a girl who thanks him for his visit, 
and informs him that the place is the rewards hall. With a smile on her face, the girl asks if he is there to make a request or if he is a superhuman. Ming He then responds that he is a superhuman. The girl says she understands and asks what his rank is. She will assign a mission according to his level. Ming He explains that he just wants to kill some mutant cockroaches to earn the rewards, so he would like to know how to find out if his rank is high enough to do that. The girl then shows him a badge and says she will give it to him, which is an indication of being a superhuman, but there are many conditions for it. Initially, he would need to show at least some basic superpower. The girl then continues her explanation, saying that if he really wants to be ranked up to the point of becoming a starlight rank, he will have to go through several very complicated exams. Ming He then smiles and asks her to take him to the training center. He then arrives at the training center. There he finds several people doing strength tests. The girl then asks what kind of superpower he has. Ming He simply replies that his powers are his fists. The girl then asks him to look at the robot that will be used to test him. The robot is very resistant, so he can hit it with all the force he has. After punching, the robot will give him a value of how strong that punch was. Ming He then looks at the robot's face and realizes there is a value on the screen showing 800 kilograms. After seeing that, Ming He begins to deduce that probably 800 kilograms is the minimum he needs to reach to fit into the necessary standards for approval. He then starts to move his fist, saying he's not sure if he will be able to do it or not, but either way, he will do his best. Ming He then positions himself while still thinking that, whether he likes it or not, he was in a coma for a whole year, so probably his muscles have not fully recovered yet. Ming He then prepares himself while gathering strength in his fist and throws a punch with all his strength at the robot, causing a huge blast of wind around his fist. Everyone around realizes that was quite a punch, as the sound was so loud that it caught everyone's attention. Ming He, seeing all that smoke coming out, asks how much he scored. The exam girl is shocked to see that. The robot had been damaged where he punched it. Even a piece of the robot's chest fell off. The scoreboard on the robot shows it was a punch equivalent to a thousand kilograms. Ming He, without much expression, sees that it was a thousand kilograms and thinks he at least managed enough to be approved. Other people who were in the place doing the test enter despair, saying, just enough to be approved? The man explains that he just broke the test's record. The girl who guided him to take that exam explains that the 800 kilograms he had seen was the result left by the iron fist that debuted recently. So now Ming, he has just broken that record. Ming he then feels embarrassed hearing that. He then goes back to the reception of that hall. There the girl gives him a card and explains that it is a small prize for breaking the record. It was a thousand yuan shopping card. The girl also explains that if he breaks other records during the exams, he can receive even more rewards. Ming He then asks her what types of ranks they have there. The girl explains that in that hall, they deal with starlight rank, moonlight rank, solar ray rank, and paradise light rank. She explains that if his rank is higher than one of those four, he should go somewhere else. Ming He then becomes pensive, looking at the card, and then smiles. He gets excited, imagining that he's heard that when someone reaches the paradise light rank, that person can buy a mansion and a luxury car. He's not sure if it's true or not. But for now, he decides he needs to focus on getting stronger and impressing everyone. Ming, he then walks to the place where the hunt for rewards will take place and wonders if all those people were there trying to recruit other members for their groups. He walks among the people and didn't imagine there were so many people interested in those rewards. And he had never seen so many superhumans together like that before. At that moment, a man with a giant headset approaches Ming He and asks if he's alone. If so, he asks if he would like to join the Crimson Eagles. Ming He turns around and asks if they are all there to find more members for their groups. The man with the headset named Luo replies that obviously yes. After all, they were going to a dangerous place. Also, if a person goes alone and is caught by the monsters, no one will know. He also explains that officials do not allow users below the solar ray rank to enter alone to hunt monsters. Ming He says he understands. Luo then asks Ming He what his rank is and if he could show his badge. Ming He then shows his badge. Luo then, with a mocking expression, asks if it's serious that Ming He is just a starlight rank intern. Luo apologizes, but his group doesn't recruit any beginners. Luo starts to move away while telling Ming He that he advises him to go back and train a little more, as he is a starlight rank intern, and entering to hunt those monsters with that rank is asking to die. Ming He then puts his hand on his head, wondering if no one would want to ally with him because his rank is too low. At that moment, a girl spots him. This girl asks her group if that person standing there isn't Ming He from their class. 
The guy standing says it's true. It seems that Ming He really is there. The guy with blue hair named Zheng starts laughing, saying that a group just dismissed Ming He. And if he heard correctly, they even said they didn't want to deal with newcomers. Lin then stands up and shouts for Ming He. Ming He approaches the group, and then Lin asks when he was discharged. After all, they heard he was in a coma. Ming He replies that it's been a while. Xing Hong then asks what Ming He was doing there. Ming He says he was there to hunt mutant monsters to earn good money and pay medical expenses. Zheng, mocking him, says that someone with a weak physique like his should worry about not being devoured by the monsters. And being as weak as Ming He, thinking of hunting them? Lin, worried about Ming He, says it's very dangerous and asks him not to take such a big risk, especially because, as she remembers, his ability was not made for combat. Zheng, still mocking, says he remembers that Ming He's ability was luck, so what use would that have? Basically, he'll buy a bottle of water, and the clerk will say, Congratulations, you won another one. Lin then gets angry and tells Zheng to stop joking. After all, Ming He just left the hospital, and he's trying hard. So, as old classmates, it's their duty to help him. Lin then asks Ming He to join their group, and they will protect him. Ming He, happy, says yes. Ming He still thinks that the officials prohibited him from entering alone, so he would be forced to join a group anyway. Ming He then observes that group, imagining that they still look down on him as always. However, that group entered the Institute of Superhumans over a year ago, so they probably became very strong. Ming He then looks at the last member of the group, Xiao Dan, and imagines that everyone in that group must still look at him as that poor guy, a rejected person who was paralyzed for a year. Xing Hong then says that Ming He's ability is luck, right? So maybe he'll bring luck to the whole group, so it would be interesting to have him as a kind of mascot for the group. Xiao Dan says they were classmates, so they should just let him into the group. Lin says that's right, that classmates should help each other. They then begin to walk through the city streets, while Lin says they all studied at the Institute of Superhumans for a year. She also tells that the Institute requires each student to participate in extracurricular activities at least once, so they all decided to come back this summer to help deal with the pollution incident. Ming, he then takes the opportunity to ask about Luo Qian, asking if she isn't with them. Zheng, once again mocking, asks if he's still thinking about her. He replies that Luo Qian is now a celebrity at the Institute, so why would she want to work with low-level former classmates? Lin recounts that Luo Qian became incredibly strong, and none of them could catch up to her. She heard that Luo Qian returned to the city of Lanyang to help the officials in the search for the source of the pollution. Lin remembers that Ming He had perfect grades in humanities, so she takes the opportunity to ask what he thinks the source of the pollution might be. As the group walked, there were many eyes watching them from the sewers. Zheng, upon hearing Lin, asks what's the point of having perfect grades if without combat ability, Ming, he would never be accepted into the institute, and they were there hunting mutant cockroaches. Zheng also says how they, who are just students, could have a task like finding the source of the pollution. Ming, he continues pensive at that moment, imagining that according to the reports, there were three types of mutant monsters, the mutant cockroach, the mutant larvae, and the mutant rats. Ming, he begins to think about the sewers and that all these parasites lived there, so probably the pollutant must have entered in fluid form into the sewer system. This would make that point a mutation site, greatly increasing the number of mutant organisms. Ming He, still pensive, says that mutant cockroaches are relatively easy to deal with, but those demonic rats are much more intimidating. As for the mutant larvae, he did not witness them, but he still thinks that even if they mutate, they should not be on the level of cockroaches, as they belong to the easy-to-kill group. Ming He continues walking calmly, until he stops feeling something. He then looks back, frightened, and notices a huge number of larvae coming out of the sewer. The grouped larvae formed a giant mutant arm. Ming He becomes worried upon seeing that, wondering if that is the mutant larvae. The arm of the larvae keeps getting bigger, until a giant wave of larvae emerges behind the giant arm. The giant wave of larvae comes out sweeping everything in its path. Lin, desperate, shouts for everyone to run as fast as they can from there. Lin and Ming He start running, being chased by the wave of larvae that sweeps everything up to the cars on the street. Ming He, as he runs, notices a larvae in front of him. He steps on it, crushing it, and realizes that a larva is really easy to kill, but he had forgotten that larvae are underground parasites that live in groups, and they would always walk in a colossal number. Ming He starts screaming for everyone to run, that those were mutant larvae and they feed in a collective group. Zheng, still not seeing the situation, asks what is the reason to be afraid. 
After all, that was the only reason they had gone there. However, Zheng looks deeper and is shocked by what he was seeing. Zheng starts running frantically away from the wave of larvae, while Ming He runs alongside. Zheng then runs to a building, saying that there is a door with reinforced glass there, so they will probably be safe there. Ming He asks where Lin was that he didn't see her. Xiao Dan, concerned, replies that apparently Lin stumbled and fell back there. Ming He then immediately breaks, asking why they didn't help her, and he runs back, saying they need to save her. All three members of the group are paralyzed, terrified by those giant larvae. Lin is almost caught by the larvae as she screams for Mingyi not to come towards her, or he will die. Mingyi speeds towards her, and as he approaches, he says that it was she who said that classmates should help each other to grow together. At that moment, Mingyi sees the fire hydrant and gets an idea. He punches the hydrant, absorbing the water into his fist, which is now very close to that giant wave of larvae. Ming, he then delivers a water punch, creating a giant vortex towards the larvae. The water swept everything around it, the name of that punch was Explosive Wave Punch, and the water was everywhere, carrying the larvae along. Ming He, after delivering that powerful punch, says that he may not be able to kill those larvae, but he will not allow them to do as they please. He says this as the remains of the larvae fall after receiving that powerful vortex. Ming He then extends his hand, asking if Lin is okay. Lin crying can only imagine how strong Ming He is. They begin to walk away from there and she can only wonder if that person really is the Ming He who studied with her. Ming He then leads her to a safe place, telling her to relax. They will be there soon. Lin looks at Ming He's face and says he is really very handsome. She then, sadly and embarrassed, says it's a shame since he already likes Luo Qian. However, even so, she still thanks him in her thoughts for not leaving an idiot like her behind. The two then approach the building, and upon entering, see the three members of the group sitting. Seeing her like that, they ask if she is okay. Zheng then, embarrassed, says they were already going to save her. But Ming He was ahead so he got there first. Xing Hong says that's right, while Xiao Dan says they didn't even realize she had stumbled and fallen. Zheng smiles worriedly, saying he missed the chance to save a damsel in distress. Xiao Dan, seeing Lin's injuries, asks if the mutant larvae have returned to the sewer. Ming He asks them to first worry about Lin's injuries. He says that the secretion of mutant larvae can be corrosive, so they will probably need a medicinal ointment to treat it. Smiling, Lin says it's just a small bruise, so she believes it wouldn't be enough to affect her movements. Ming He then stands up and says it's good to know that. He asks everyone to take care of Lin while he inspects the building to prevent the larvae from entering. Ming He then moves away from them to check the situation of the building. Xiao Dan at that moment scolds the two boys, asking why they didn't think of inspecting the building. It seems that none of them is as cautious as Ming He. And look, Ming He was rejected from the Superhuman Institute. Zheng and Xing Hong smile awkwardly for having received that scolding. Ming He then observes the layout of the place and decides to enter the laboratory. First, he passes through Greenhouse 1. Then, he walks through Greenhouse 4. And lastly, he passes through Greenhouse 9. In Greenhouse 9, he observes what was written on the sign, which informs that the insects from Greenhouse 9 were reported missing on December 30, 2030 and that scene was protected, and the case is awaiting investigation. Ming He, observing that break in the glass of the greenhouse, says he was startled for a few seconds, but apparently they have been missing for almost half a year. Ming He wonders if the source of pollution would also cause mutation in those domestic insects. Ming, he then starts walking again, saying that everything indicates that the mutant organisms are mainly coming from the sewers. At this moment, he steps on a newspaper. He doesn't notice, but in the newspaper is a news article that standardized centipedes from Leon Pu are huge centipedes that originated in southern Peru. This species is the largest species that exists and has large jaws and extremely long antennae. Ming. He then starts walking towards a double door. He tries to open it, but realizes that the back door is locked and starts to imagine that there is no other way out of there, and the sewage system is also sealed, so the mutant larvae should not be able to enter there. At this moment, Ming He is startled to look through the glass of the door. He notices a person walking outside. Upon closer inspection, he realizes it is Dr. Zhao and wonders why the doctor is walking alone in that isolated area. Ming He begins to imagine that he must be going to the broken building ahead since he was heading in that direction. Ming He finds it strange since Dr. Zhao is not a superhuman, so it is too dangerous for him to be walking alone in the streets. At this moment, his cell phone starts ringing, so he answers and realizes it's an unknown number. A woman calls Ming, he little brother, 
and in a very sensual way asks where he is. It was Nurse Song calling Ming He to accompany her to dinner. She would like to properly thank him for saving her, and doesn't accept a no for an answer. She even asks him to call her Big Sister. Ming He asks, Big Sister? Nurse explains that her last name is Song, and her first name is Lan, but he could call her either Sister Song or even Sister Lan, and that would be fine. Ming He replies to Sister Song that he understood, but at that moment he couldn't do anything, as he was in an isolated area. Nurse Song then raises her voice, asking what he was doing in a dangerous place. After all, that area is completely closed off to people. She also heard that there were many mutant monsters in that area, and not just the ones they encountered when they fled the hospital. Ming He then replies that there is a reward, so he would like to earn some to lighten his sister's burden. Nurse Song starts taking off her high heels and asks Ming He if the sister he was referring to was Qin Yu. She also asks if they are blood relatives. Ming He replies that they are not, but they grew up together in the orphanage. Song then finishes taking off her sandals and asks Ming He if because of this, their bonds are even stronger than blood relatives. Ming He on the phone says yes. Song then starts undressing while still talking to Ming He on the phone and tells him she thinks he's very cute for wanting to help his sister. Song also says it's a shame he's working so that dinner can be postponed for another time. Song, now completely naked, says it's a shame since she was even dressed up. Ming He then, still on the phone, tells Sister Song that he just saw Dr. Zhao on the street and he was walking alone in an isolated area, which was extremely dangerous. Song says it's strange for Dr. Zhao to be in that area and asks if Ming He is sure it's him. Ming He replies yes, and that Dr. Zhao probably didn't see him through the door window because it's opaque from the outside. Song, now in her pajamas, says that Dr. Zhao has been acting strange in the past year. He used to be a hard worker, but lately he always leaves early. Many times, Dr. Zhao even makes mistakes during surgeries. Song also says that the doctor seems lethargic, as if he doesn't even sleep properly. Song even recounts that one day the hospital headquarters sent a sample of blood from a calamity beast. They wanted Dr. Zhao to purify it, but the doctor managed to accidentally lose it. Ming He, upon hearing that, is scared, remembering a class he had where the professor explained that the blood of special calamity beasts leaves their bodies and comes into contact with oxygen, causing air mutation. Calamity beast blood has an incubation period of one year. Ming He is surprised since that sample of calamity beasts probably caused the pollution in the sewers. Ming He then takes the opportunity to ask Sister Song when Dr. Zhao lost that calamity beast blood. Song replies that it was about a year ago. She remembers that it was precisely on the day Ming He arrived at the hospital. Song recalls opening the door and calling for Dr. Zhao, saying that the astronomy department had sent a tube of calamity beast blood and they were waiting for him to examine it. Ming He then tells Sister Song that the calamity beast blood is probably the cause of all that mutation. He explains that the timing fits perfectly since the incubation period is one year. So that's why even though it happened a year ago, the disasters are only happening now. Worried, Song asks if he is serious. After all, Dr. Zhao said he lost the blood after purifying it. Ming, he replies that the doctor probably lied. Ming, he also says that he had perfect grades in the super theory class. So the reason has to be that since everything fits, Song then begins to pour wine into her glass while telling Ming He that she is not surprised to see Dr. Zhao there in the isolated area by himself. The doctor probably realized the mistake he made and that he was to blame, so he probably went back and is trying to find that blood. Ming He agrees but says that it is very dangerous. After all, Dr. Zhao is not a superhuman and there are probably many mutant monsters in that area, especially near the source of the pollution. Song starts drinking her wine and says that Dr. Zhao is probably afraid of being held responsible for this. Ming He says that this is not a trivial matter. He asks his big sister Song to inform the officials about what happened and to ask them to investigate that broken building immediately. Ming, he further explains that Dr. Zhao is not a superhuman and apparently he doesn't understand that near the source of the pollution is probably the most dangerous place to be near. Ming He says he needs to stop him at all costs. Song then says she will contact the officials immediately and asks him to be careful. Ming He asks her not to worry since he will only stop Dr. Zhao from doing something stupid. Ming. He also says he doesn't intend to go to the source of the pollution. He then walks back to the group. Jing then spots him, saying he finally came back. Ming He then approaches the group saying that the building is safe and all the doors have been sealed. So the mutant larvae probably won't be able to get in there. Ming He then walks to the door and asks everyone to rest there. That he would go out for a minute to handle something and be right back. Lin then, worried, gets up and asks where he is going. After all, it's very dangerous to walk alone outside. 
Ming He just closes the door without answering. Ming He then sees a destroyed car beyond the larvae on the ground. He begins to think that although he didn't kill all of them, they still won't be able to do anything for a while. Ming He then looks to one side and says that's probably the direction he should go. He then finds an alley and says he will take that shortcut to get there faster. Just as he enters the alley, two mutant cockroaches fly over him. The cockroaches then block his path, preventing Ming He from escaping. From afar, it was possible to hear his two punches causing boom crash. He had his fist clenched since he had just finished off the two cockroaches with just one punch each. He then looks in another direction and says that's probably the way he should go. He then runs out of that alley, leaving the dead bodies of the mutant cockroaches behind. Ming He then runs stealthily to the end of a street and finally finds Zhao. The doctor then enters an abandoned building. Ming He takes advantage and follows him inside the building. Upon entering the building, Ming He sees a huge hole and asks why there is that huge hole inside the building. In the hole, there was also a rope ladder nailed. Ming He imagines that probably the doctor went down that ladder. Ming He then just jumps into the hole, wondering what Dr. Zhao is thinking of doing in a place like that. Upon landing on the ground, Ming He thinks that the situation is not as simple as it seems. He comes across a path full of pipes. He then follows the path until he reaches the end, where he spots Dr. Zhao again at the end of the tunnel. Dr. Zhao then exits the tunnel while Ming He follows him and comes across the water supply for the city of Lanyang. Dr. Zhao is climbing the stairs of that supply and Ming He shouts his name, asking what he was doing there. Dr. Zhao is startled, asking if it was really Ming He who was there. Ming He, without wasting any time, asks Dr. Zhao if he really purified the blood of the Calamity Beast last year. The doctor asks how he knows about it. Ming He shouts, demanding him to just answer the question. Zhao, trembling with concern over the situation, admits he made a serious mistake and initially didn't realize it. As Zhao starts to descend the stairs, he remarks that he had no intention of hiding the truth and that it was indeed unintentional. Approaching Minga, Zhao explains that being a doctor is not easy, that he is constantly saving lives and actually enjoys it. He further confesses that he was unaware his negligence would cause this mutation and therefore he is there to check if the city's supply is polluted since the contaminated blood was lost nearby. Dr. Zhao becomes increasingly desperate, shouting that all he wants is to do the right thing, truly from the bottom of his heart. Ming He finds the doctor's behavior strange and responds that, like it or not, the doctor is not a superhuman, so he should have reported the situation to the authorities, who would have taken appropriate measures. At a loss for what to do, Zhao says at least Ming He is a superhuman. Zhao grabs Ming He's hands, crying that he saw him save a lot of people when the hospital was attacked by mutant cockroaches, and Ming He also defeated the demonic rat, with Dr. Zhao as a witness. Zhao begs for his help. Becoming increasingly desperate and starting to cry, he says he has a wife and children to take care of, and if the authorities find out, he will not only lose his job, but will also go straight to jail. He explains that if that happens, no one will take care of his family. So he pleads for Ming He's help to end this disaster together. Zhao kneels down, begging Ming He to help him. Ming He is surprised by everything he is hearing. He approaches the doctor and asks him to calm down, then explains that unfortunately, his ability has limits. Moreover, Zhao is just a doctor, so what he was doing there was just courting death. Ming Yi takes the doctor's hands and explains that what he was doing would only worsen the situation. The doctor starts wiping his tears, admitting that Ming Yi is right. Their abilities are indeed limited, so what they can do is also limited. Ming Yi then says their priority is to get out of there and then go to the authorities to report the situation rather than letting them handle it. The doctor remains silent for a moment, and then asks, Report this, to the authorities. Zhao is pleased, saying that this means that so far Ming He hasn't told anyone about it, since he is suggesting reporting it to the authorities. Ming He confirms that he hasn't told anyone. He adds that it's better for the doctor himself to explain to the authorities in his own version. Ming He begins to look around and asks Dr. Zhao if this is where he lost the blood of the beast, because if that's the case, then that is exactly where the pollution is. Zhao, looking down, admits that yes, that is indeed the place, but he did not lose the blood of the beast. As the doctor gradually stands up after saying this, he draws Ming He's attention, and once fully upright, tells Ming He that he is still a student, so there are many things he still cannot understand. Ming He stares at the doctor for a moment, and then begins to suspect that there really is something suspicious about Dr. Zhao. Realizing that he cannot just leave since Dr. Zhao has a suspicious look that might cause something strange there, Ming He tells the doctor that he does not understand what he meant by that. Zhao remains silent for a moment and then says that Ming He has already seen the cockroach, 
the larva, and even the rat, Zhao explains that all of them live in the shadows of the city producing germs and transmitting diseases. The existence of them leads people to exterminate them, right? He asks Minghe. Mingyi, confused, agrees that it's true, but in his thoughts he's trying to understand what Dr. Zhao is implying. Zhao, with a sinister look, asks if Mingyi has ever thought about how humans reproduce recklessly, steal recklessly, and keep creating industrial and chemical pollution non-stop. He further explains that people have constantly destroyed the environment to the extent that there is so much trash, they even send it to space. Zhao shouts that what humanity has done is no different from what the cockroaches, larvae, and rats do. Mingyi tells the doctor that his thinking is indeed correct. Humanity really does need to protect the environment. Zhao agrees, but then reveals what Mingyi does not know. To the universe, the creation of life is actually a mistake. Zhao, with his sinister smile, explains that life should never have existed, and that a universe without life is wonderful and serene. However, once life existed, it became akin to an invasive bacteria in a healthy body. Zhao further explains about cancer cells, and how their most notable characteristic is their ability to divide infinitely and uncontrollably, thus destroying any living cell. Humans reproduce every generation, and they never stop devastating the world. Zhao goes mad with his explanation, saying that humanity even aims to leave Earth to conquer the solar system, and then the Milky Way. Therefore, wherever humans exist, there will never be beauty and peace. Minghi, concerned by all this, asks if the doctor isn't exaggerating. After all, everything he said is anti-human. Moreover, Minghi really is just a student, so he cannot grasp the complexity of the idea the doctor just expressed. The doctor rushes to Minghi, asking if, when he gets sick, his body's immune system will eliminate those germs for him, right? Minghi says yes. The doctor asks if it's the same logic for the universe. The universe is sick, and humans are the virus. Soon the universe will create something to kill everyone. Zhao, still holding on to Mingyi, starts shouting that Mingyi is a young superhuman, so everything he learned about calamity beasts, disasters, catastrophes, are actually the works of the universe's immune system. That is, everything is going according to the universe's will to eliminate the threat. Zhao, completely insane with a dark laugh, says that the universe is doing its utmost to completely exterminate humanity. Mingyi starts to get stressed, saying that the doctor's talk is going way beyond the real topic they are currently on. Minghe already starts to look at the doctor differently, imagining that he is acting very strange, basically going crazy. Minghe tells the doctor that their focus at the moment should be on the source of the pollution that generated those mutants, and that all this was his fault, including how many people died because of it. Zhao adjusts his glasses and asks if that really is a mistake. Zhao removes his glasses and completely insane says that he is a doctor, and when people are sick, he takes care of them. And the same applies to the universe, he is the doctor of the universe. Zhao says he is responsible for eradicating humans from the universe who have proliferated like cancer cells. Zhao breaks his glasses, and with a completely insane face, looking more like a mutant, says that not even the cockroaches, rats, and larvae living in the sewers are as terrible as humanity. Minghe starts to become concerned about the drastic mood change the doctor is having. Zhao explains that he created the source of the mutation on purpose, that initially it was a simple experiment. He would start by killing just the people of the city Lanyang, then would go on killing people from other metropolitan areas. Zhao throws his broken glasses on the ground and says that the earth is sick, so it needs treatment. Thus humans need to be annihilated. Zhao gives a slight smile, already drooling, and points his finger at Minghe, saying that before completing the great treatment, he will have to eliminate a rebellious bug like Minghe. Zhao approaches with a sinister smile and thanks Minghe for being so dumb and innocent, and after dealing with him, Zhao will be able to continue his plan to completely pollute the city. Zhao imagines all the isolated places, and then tells the doctor that the entire southern suburb has been completely isolated and quarantined, so even if he had planned this since last year, it would not be possible for the mutation to spread. Zhao, still insane, gives a long laugh and says that indeed the government can block the surface and even the soil, but how will they block the water pipes? Minghe becomes extremely worried as Dr. Zhao says that all the city's water passes through there. Zhao explains that through the plumbing system, the source of the mutation will spread throughout the city of Lanyang. He further says that the city needs water to wash groceries, bathe and clean anything they want. All this water comes from that supply, so all this water will end up in the city's sewers. He also says that in the end, all the city's cockroaches, rats and larvae will undergo mutation. Minghe interrupts the doctor, saying he doesn't understand any of what he's saying. Minghe says this, but is thinking he needs to get out of there urgently. 
and since Dr. Zhao is not a superhuman, he shouldn't be able to stop it. Minghe says Zhao can continue what he was doing, but Minghe needs to leave there now. Zhao, not understanding anything, asks if Minghe won't try to stop him right then. Minghe begins to leave, and Zhao starts saying that when Minghe saved all those people from the hospital, wasn't that an act of justice? After all, doesn't he want to be the hero who saves the city? Minghe continues on his way, saying he doesn't care about that. He only cares about his own life. Minghe waves his hand and just says that he is trash that wasn't accepted into the Institute for Superhumans, so he is completely disqualified to be a hero. Zhao can't believe Minghe is saying this. Zhao puts his hand inside his shirt and says that Minghe is even smart for not getting in the way. The doctor also says that now he just needs to put the blood in the tank and the plan will be successfully completed. Zhao, with a diabolical face, imagines that after that, even if the authorities arrive, it will be too late to do anything about it. At this moment, Zhao realizes that the vial of the beast's blood has disappeared from his pocket and becomes furious upon seeing this. He then remembers that at one moment, Minghe touched his body when he said he didn't understand anything and at that time probably stole the blood. Zhao becomes completely stressed as his body begins to undergo a mutation. He then kneels as his head starts to hurt in a surreal way. His teeth begin to grow, and in his head, he can only imagine himself turning into a monster. His legs also begin to mutate until he finally turns into a mutant, completely consumed by fury. The doctor, now a mutant, is roaring extremely loudly and furiously. Minghe is running at that moment while Zhao shouts from afar to return that blood. Minghe imagines that apparently that vial really is the key to everything. He looks back and sees Dr. Zhao following him. Minghe wonders if this is Dr. Zhao's superhuman ability. Zhao was completely different now that he is a mutant. Zhao with one arm tightens the muscle of the other arm, which was slower than usual, and then pulls a monster out of it, throwing this monster towards Minghe. At that moment, Minghe can only think that just like the cockroaches, rats, and larvae, the doctor also underwent mutation. The monsters jump onto Minghe's back at high speed because they were thrown by that mutant. Minghe was already climbing the stairs imagining that he had finally managed to get there. However, the mutant monsters cut the rope before he can escape from there. The demonic monster steps back a bit and prepares to attack again. Minghe is now surrounded, imagining that those damned monsters are sneaky. Minghe looks at the monsters and the ropes, realizing that Zhao wasn't aiming at him or the monsters, but at the stairs to cut them and prevent his escape. The demonic monsters attack all at once. Minghe sees an opening and then starts kicking all the monsters, using them as a springboard to escape from the hole. He successfully escapes the hole using the monsters as support, and upon emerging, he notices concrete beside him. He quickly places his hand on the concrete while extracting that element to use his power. He then uses this new power to seal the exit of the hole completely with his power using the concrete he found there. The mutant monsters trying to follow Mingi hit their heads on the concrete as they try to pursue him. The monsters were at high speed, so they hit their heads and fall back to the ground where the mutant Zhao was. Zhao looks up and says he can smell the blood of the beast. He, still with a sinister look and sticking out his tongue, says he knows this because his body is full of that blood. He also says that Minghe won't escape him by any means. Minghe continues running through the city streets, fleeing with the blood in his possession. He starts to think about the mutations, and that apparently they are based on how strong they were when they were still animals, with the worms being even weaker, their rank is nearly serve. Then come the mutant cockroaches with the servant rank. After them is the demonic rat with the general rank. Minghe still imagines that the demonic rat gave him quite a bit of trouble to defeat. He also imagines that if the mutant forms from an adult human, it would be a problem, as is the case with Dr. Zhao. Minghe follows the path to exit the alley while imagining that Dr. Zhao in mutant form must be extremely powerful, so probably Minghe is not capable of dealing with him. Thinking about this, Minghe immediately stops running, realizing that he can't go in the direction of the people in the building ahead. He then changes his direction, imagining that with the current strength of the mutant Zhou, if Minghe is followed by him, it will be a big problem since everyone in that building will probably die. Minghe imagines he needs to stall as much as possible until the officials arrive there behind that blood. He proceeds down the street, hoping that Nurse Song really did go to notify the officials. Elsewhere, larvae are scattered on the ground. A person steps in the middle of them. It was Huang Feng who is cleaning the city. He is of lunar rank. Nearby, in the abandoned buildings to the west, Xiao Lan, who is also of lunar rank, says that the cleaning there is complete. Xiao Zhang, also of lunar rank, 
tells everyone to return since his magical power has also run out. Luo Kaishuan says he will call his puppets back. He smiles, saying that they are about to receive a huge reward for that cleaning. The man in a blue shirt says that, apparently, that group didn't even need a healer like him for that mission. He looks at the whole team happily and wonders why there are no strong monsters there. He doesn't notice a red light coming out of the sewer cover where he was standing. At this moment, everyone on the team is startled as they look up. The healer in the blue shirt is thrown very high, even higher than the buildings, by something from beneath the sewer cover. Xiao Lan quickly jumps to help, catches the healer in the air, and returns to the street holding him safely. Everyone looks at the hole formed in the ground where the sewer cover was. Mutant Zhao emerges from that hole with red eyes, thirsting for blood. Feng laughs at the situation and says that the rookie healer really has no luck. Xiao Jiang also laughs at the situation and says he didn't expect that there would be a different mutant in the sewers, right under the cover where the healer was. He suggests they clean it up quickly to look for a good place to rest. Kaixuan gets excited seeing that the monster is huge and already imagines they will make a lot of money defeating it. Kaixuan imagines that a mutant monster of that size will earn them at least $100,000, and since there are five of them there, each would earn $20,000. It's definitely much more lucrative than fighting those worms. Mutant Zhao starts walking towards them, while Feng tells the mutant that he is quite disgusting and unlucky to encounter a group with several lunar ranks. Mutant Zhao gets excited and says he will enjoy dealing with them. Mutant Zhao charges forward with his huge hand attempting to grab Feng while saying he will eliminate him right there. Feng charges energy in his foot and then jumps back saying that the monster is extremely slow. So how does he think he will catch him? Feng is then startled to see the mutant's hand increasing in size coming towards his head. The arm grew so much in size that it finally reached Feng who was trying to escape. Feng is pressed against the wall while spitting blood. Zhao says he figured it would be quite easy. Zhao starts to lift him with one arm. With the other arm, he begins to transform it into a weapon. Zhao does this while saying that the best way to cure them is by killing them all. At this moment, several spikes emerge from mutant Zhao's body, piercing through Feng's entire body. Zhao boasts, saying that one is down. Xiao Lan puts the healer on the ground while shouting Feng's name. She jumps again at full speed and slashes mutant Zhao in several places, screaming for him to let Feng go. Mutant Zhao is having fun with the situation. The cuts made on his body by Xiao Lan's sword heal quickly, eventually sealing completely. Xiao Lan enraged, screams that he is a disgusting mutant, and charges at him at full speed. Mutant Zhao quickly looks at her and then attacks her with his other arm without her being able to react. Xiao Lan has her chest cut without any difficulty. Mutant Zhao throws Feng's body away. Now both are lifeless on the ground, while Zhao says that two are down and asks the rest of the team if they are happy to see their teammates dead. Xiao Zhang and Kai Xuan are completely terrified before that monster. Mutant Zhao, with a demonic face, says that they will certainly be happy after all, they will get the profit from the two who were killed. At this moment, some monsters come out through the sewer hole. These are the creatures that Mutant Zhao summoned right when he transformed. The demonic monsters start sniffing around looking for Ming He. Mutant Zhao says he wanted to have fun with the two who are left, but unfortunately he is short on time. The two are paralyzed with fear, including Kai Xuan, who could no longer even stand up from shaking so much. The mutant monsters, after so much sniffing, report that they found something. They then run at full speed to the location. Mutant Zhao is happy to have finally found it and starts running following the demonic monsters, while saying he will love to make Mingke into pieces. Kai Chuan, crying, asks what the hell that monster is. Xiao Jiang, also crying and holding the dead Xiao Lan, says that definitely that monster is of the leader class. There's no way it could be a class below that. They say they are definitely lucky to have survived. The demonic monsters begin running all over the city, jumping from building to building. Mingke, running at full speed, says he had definitely managed to lose them. However, even so, those demonic monsters managed to locate him even in these complex streets. Mingi, looking at those monsters, imagines they must have been able to locate him by the smell of that blood. Mingi continues running, thankful that the speed of Mutant Zhao is not as great as that of those demonic monsters. Minga, looking at the vial with the blood, imagines that under no circumstances can it fall into the hands of Mutant Zhao again. At that moment, Mingi notices something ahead. He was near a gas station. He decides to head to the station, specifically to the gas pumps. He starts pouring gasoline on his hand, thinking that he doesn't know if he'll be able to hold out until the authorities arrive. But the strong smell of gasoline should mask his own scent a bit. Ming-He then decides to enter the gas station store to hide. 
He looks out through the glass and sees that the demonic monsters don't know his exact location. Minghee is relieved because the gasoline really worked. He says this while continuing to rub gasoline on his arm. The demonic monsters keep searching everywhere, but one of them senses a strange smell coming from inside the store. The demonic monster decides to head towards the store. Minghee can't believe it. The monster then passes through the door. It enters slowly, trying to pinpoint the smell, while Mingi stays hidden behind some shelves. Mingi starts to worry because suddenly the monster's footsteps stop making noise, suggesting it has stopped moving. At that moment, the demonic monster is already above the shelf looking right at Mingi. Mingi only realizes when a drop of blood from the monster falls on his cheek. Mingi looks at the glass of a machine and notices that the monster is on top of it and is indeed attacking him. Minghee at the last second manages to dodge, ducking just in time. Minghee grabs a metal rod that supports the shelf he was under, and then pushes it, knocking the whole shelf onto the demonic monster. After doing this, he runs towards the door. As he approaches the door, he stops abruptly. He grabs the doorknob and figures that undoubtedly the other three monsters went in another direction, and only the monster that was on the shelf has a higher sensitivity to smell, and is there alone because of it. In other words, that monster was left behind. Mingi, thinking this, decides to close the door, and thinks that fleeing is useless. He figures that if he doesn't kill that monster with a higher sensitivity to smells, Minghee will be found sooner or later by it. Minghee starts to gather energy, figuring he needs to kill that monster there and now. The demonic monster finally destroys the shelf that was on its back. Minghee stands before the monster, and then thinks that his hand needs to be in contact with something special to activate the corresponding fist ability to what he is touching. He remembers the battle in the hospital against the mutant cockroach, where for a brief moment he had sulfuric acid fists when his hand came into contact with sulfuric acid, just like his fight against the demonic rat, where he obtained flaming fists when his hand touched the fire, or his fight against the mutant larvae, where he had explosive wave fists when his hand touched water. Minky then starts to look around the market and sees nothing there that could really be effective to use with his fist. However, he cannot leave there to find something, as by leaving he risks the other demonic monsters finding him, and thus mutant Zhao would too. The demonic monster, without wasting time, jumps on Mingyi trying to devour him, while Mingyi figures he has no choice but to fight inside that supermarket. He then dodges the claws of the monster while gathering energy throughout his body. With this, he delivers a powerful kick to the monster's belly, throwing it far towards a wall where there were some bags of wheat. The demonic monster hits them hard, causing a strong explosion and raising a lot of dust there. Mingi's vision is compromised by the dust that was raised. The monster emerges from nowhere in the middle of all that dust attacking Ming-He quickly. Ming-He doesn't have time to react and is pinned to the ground by the monster's claws. Ming-He tries to free himself at all costs, but the monster is pressing his body down hard against the ground. The demonic monster prepares to devour Ming-He's head, but he manages to dodge at the last second. The monster lifts its paw slightly, allowing Ming-He to move his arm better, and because of this, he delivers a powerful punch to the monster's chin. Minghee takes advantage of the moment to get up, and while the monster is still airborne from the blow, he prepares to attack. He unleashes numerous punches on the monster's belly, giving it no time to react. Minghee then gathers even more energy for his final punch and strikes with great force, causing damage to the wall of the market. He remains with his arm paused where he delivered his last punch. The monster's head is completely shattered along with the wall, while Minghee's hand is only slightly bloodied. Minghee then turns to leave and on the floor lies the dead monster, headless from the powerful blow. At the same time elsewhere, mutant Zhao notices something happening. A wound suddenly appears on his shoulder. He touches the wound and becomes enraged, suspecting it's Minghee's doing. He then walks toward the supermarket along with other mutant monsters. He arrives and kicks down the door. Upon entering, he sees one of his monsters dead without a head. Mutant Zhao becomes even more furious and declares that he will have to make his monsters undergo more mutations to be able to fight the accursed Mingyi. Zhao points to the body of his dead monster and orders his other monsters to completely devour it. All the monsters rush towards the dead demonic monster and begin to devour it entirely. The monsters begin to undergo a new mutation after consuming the carcass. Mutant Zhao is pleased to see his new creation, imagining that now his new monsters have an even greater sensitivity to smell. Zhao orders all the monsters to search for Mingi, but they must bring him back alive. The monsters speed off after receiving this order. Mingi continues running through the city, trying to get even further away from the monsters. He notices that he is still being followed, and now they are even closer. Which is strange, 
since he had eliminated the monster with the highest smell sensitivity. He sees the monsters jumping from car to car heading towards him, but Mingyi does not understand why this is happening, since their smell sensitivity wasn't that good before. Mingyi, seeing them quite close, begins to find it strange, as the growling of the demonic monsters is also different, and their appearance is a bit more frightening. At that moment, Mingyi is surprised to look ahead and see that he has arrived at an amusement park, which seems like a good place to hide, and also to deal with those monsters, given the size of the area if those monsters follow him inside. He also observes the vastness of the park, and imagines that as long as he has contact with something that can be used for his mysterious fist technique, he will be able to drastically increase his own strength. Minghi goes to a fountain and begins to wash his arm there to remove the gasoline. Minghi figures that, since he is being hunted anyway, he might as well remove what is causing him discomfort. Additionally, even if he were to encounter fire somewhere, he would likely be completely engulfed in flames before he could absorb the fire into his hands, so it would not be worthwhile to keep the gasoline on his body. After washing his arms, Minghi figures that, regardless, the demonic monsters will end up finding him, whether he walks in circles or hides. With that in mind, it seems the best strategy is to keep running. Mingyi starts walking through the park, planning first to increase the distance between himself and the monsters at intervals. Mingyi walks while thinking that all he needs to do is eliminate the monsters, since by doing so, there will be nothing that Mutant Zhao can do to stop him. At that moment, a claw emerges behind him. He hears the noise and decides to look back to see what it is. The demonic monster is already very close to him, but now it's completely different and undoubtedly more frightening than before. Mingyi asks what the heck that is, and how did these demonic monsters get so big? The mutant monster jumps from where it was and attacks Mingyi. Now the monster's arm is shaped like an axe. The monster swings this axe with all its force towards Mingyi. Mingyi dodges, and where the attack landed, a huge gash is left due to the power of the monster. Mingyi, after dodging, observes the monster closely and says that definitely the demonic monsters have evolved and are significantly stronger than before. The monster, still furious, charges at Mingyi at full speed. It delivers a powerful blow towards Mingyi's throat, but he dodges at the last second. The demonic monster, extremely furious, starts unleashing several simultaneous attacks, but Mingyi continues to dodge them all with great ease. The monster then attempts one last, even more powerful strike, but Mingyi leaps backwards, distancing himself from the monster. Mingyi lands on the ground and begins to realize that, although the monster has gained enormous strength, it has also lost a bit of speed. With this realization, Mingyi manages to dodge all the blows, although some by a very narrow margin. Mingyi prepares for the fight and even taunts the monster, telling it not to rush foolishly. The demonic monster grows increasingly furious. At this moment, two other demonic monsters arrive surrounding Mingyi. He starts to worry about his situation. He glances at the newly arrived monsters and then starts running away, bidding goodbye to all the monsters. Mingyi dashes off at full speed, jumping over the fence inside the park. The monsters continue to watch him. Mingyi decides to climb one of the playground structures, stating he will use the narrow rails to confront them from above. One of the monsters starts climbing the rail, while Mingyi plans to keep the confrontation one-on-one -on -one until he reaches the highest point of the rail, where he will finish off all the monsters at once. Mingyi uses his mysterious fist power, element extraction, and with this, he begins to infuse power into his hand. Mingyi reaches the top of the rail and still has power in his fists. He just waits for the monsters to reach him. The demonic monster finally arrives, jumping and screaming, eager to devour Mingyi at any cost. Mingyi just waits for the monster to get closer while gathering energy. With a lot of power charged in his fist, he delivers a powerful punch while asking the monster if it really thought Minghi wouldn't be rude to it. The punch causes a huge explosion visible even from afar since Minghi and the monsters are at the top of the roller coaster. Minghi lands a direct hit on the monster's paw, completely destroying it. And before the monster has a chance to react, he prepares another punch with his other fist while taunting the monster, calling it a pet. With this, Minghi lands a punch straight through the chest of the demonic monster, creating a hole in it. The monster couldn't withstand that powerful, mysterious fist. Blood spurts everywhere as the demonic monster falls from the top of the roller coaster, lifeless. Minghi observes the damage he caused and remarks that his mysterious fist, using gold as a medium, is truly powerful, as it managed to pierce through the demonic monster with just one punch. Before Minghi could rest, another monster approaches, thirsty for blood. 
Ming-He observes and wonders if these evolved monsters are at least at the commander level. Ming-He snaps his fingers and invites these pets to come at him as he is ready. The demonic monster continues climbing the roller coaster, while the other demonic monster circles around to attack from below the rails. At this moment, one monster comes from above the rail and the other from below. Ming, he can't believe what he's seeing and questions if the monsters really think this will make a difference. The monster coming from below the rail approaches closer. Ming, he just wants to see what that little monster will be capable of. The demonic monster coming from above jumps, trying to devour Ming, he with just one bite. Ming, he prepares his fists while the monster tries to bite him. The monster then changes strategy and attacks with its fists, which at that moment, look more like sharp blades. Ming He manages to block, as his arms are now harder than iron. With the arm Ming He blocked with, he pushes away the claws of the demonic monster, and with this, he prepares a punch with his other fist. Then without wasting any time, he delivers a powerful blow. The demonic monster becomes desperate seeing the punch coming its way. The punch hits squarely, but Ming He notices that a bony armor emerges on the monster's chest, blocking the punch. The demonic monster is thrown far away, but it managed to deflect the blocked blow. Meanwhile, the other demonic monster coming from underneath the rails is getting closer. Mingyi starts to worry as the monsters are evolving extremely fast even during the battle. The demonic monster then gets closer and tries to bite Mingyi's leg, but he dodges at the last second. Mingyi takes advantage of his position and stomps hard on the monster's neck, but armor appears covering the neck and blocking the attack. The demonic monster smiles and at that moment, Spikes emerge from its bony armor, attempting to stab Mingyi's foot, who dodges at the last moment. Mingyi immediately moves away, while imagining that, in addition to the armor, the monsters can also form bone spikes around their necks. Mingyi can only think of the surreal adaptation these monsters have. Mingyi prepares again for the fight, thinking that, although he had a great strategy, he is now completely surrounded. The two demonic monsters decide to attack at the same time. Mingyi remains worried at this moment. He dodges the blow from one monster while blocking the strike from the other, all at the same time. Without wasting time, ming He delivers several blows to one of the monsters, but the bony armor blocks all of them. ming He continues to defend against all the blows coming his way, but one of them gets through, causing a small cut on his chest. ming He, while blocking, hits both monsters, causing them to back off a bit. The fight continues frenetically on top of the mountain. The monsters give ming -He no time to rest and try to bite him. ming -He keeps defending and attacking simultaneously. ming -He even manages to land a punch on each monster at the same time, but due to the awkward position, he can't inflict much damage on them. ming -He prepares to continue the fight, while the monsters also get ready after each taking a punch. ming -He decides to try to finish at least one, and then moves towards it ready to deliver his blow with all his strength, while the demonic monster also prepares to attack him. ming -He, being faster, begins to deliver several simultaneous blows, and all the monster can do is cross its arms to try to defend against them all. The demonic monster is thrown far away, despite having defended all the blows. The monster breaks its own body to not fly too far. It still smiles as if it found the fight easy. ming -He becomes worried again while he gathers energy in his fists again. At this moment, without the demonic monster realizing, a tram comes along the track and hits it squarely, finishing off this monster instantly. Ming-He is hanging underneath the track to avoid being run over by the tram. He already knew what would happen. He begins to recall that he went to the control room, and there he checked the panel and saw that there was still electricity, so he could activate the roller coaster tram and try to finish off the two at the same time. Ming-He remains hanging on the roller coaster, and while looking down, imagines that he can't fall from that height at all, as it would break his legs or even kill him. He looks at the monster, which is also hanging, imagining that now only it remains to face, ming -He starts to move along the rails using his hands until he gets close to the monster. The demonic monster becomes even more furious and jumps attacking ming -He with both arms, doing this because it is holding onto the rails with its tail. ming -He blocks using both arms and then throws himself holding the monster, sending it down together. At this moment, ming -He can only imagine how these monsters are mere parasites coming from Dr. Zhao and that if that monster falls from that height, it will turn into minced meat below. ming -He continues to fall while still holding the monster's legs and asks the monster if it thinks dying together with ming -He would be a victory. Without wasting time, ming -He mounts the monster while saying that the only use for that dog would be to serve as a meat shield. ming -He keeps the monster's arms crossed so it can't do anything while he imagines the outcome will now be different. The demonic monster begins to despair as it will crash hard into the ground. 
Then the two crash onto the ground, causing a huge explosion from the impact. Minghee stands up amidst the dust and asks the monster if it was trying to make things difficult. Minghee stands up, dusting off his clothes while saying that he found the battle too easy. He begins to walk around the park looking for somewhere to clean himself. He finds some taps and decides to wash his hands there until he hears his phone ringing. It was Nurse Song, who is desperate because Minghee hadn't answered any of her calls. She asks if everything is okay with him. Minghee says yes, that he just hadn't answered because his phone was on silent. She starts to tell him that officials arrived at the construction site Minghee had mentioned and took over the whole area. Song also mentions that at the site, officials found various mutant monsters, but they are already cleaning the place up. However, the officials commented that they didn't see Minghe or Dr. Zhao at the site. Minghe finishes drying his hand while explaining the situation to Nurse Song. He says he is at an amusement park at the moment and that Dr. Zhao planned all that pollution. Moreover, Dr. Zhao was planning to spill the beast's blood into the city's water reservoir. With that, he would take control of the water and sewage reserves of the entire city. Nurse Song begins to ponder about Zhao and asks why the doctor would commit such an atrocity. Minghe explains about the serum, saying he managed to steal it from Dr. Zhao and that this serum is probably the cause of all this pollution. Minghe further explains that mutative pollutants and autogenic resistances are both present in most biological serums. Minghe holds the serum in his hand and says that after experts extract the purifying substance from the serum, the pollution in the southern suburbs of the city can be reversed, so this is of the utmost priority. Nurse Song, concerned about everything, asks Mingyi over the phone if he is really at the amusement park. She says she will call the officials to escort him back. Mingyi, looking at his cell phone map, says he won't do that, and then asks her to inform the officials to meet him at the south tower of the city. Mingyi explains that he is still being pursued by Dr. Zhao, so he can't stay in the same place for too long. Minghe mentions that Dr. Zhao underwent a mutation, so the officials need to send professionals to stop the doctor. Otherwise, he will kill everyone. It is night, and Minghe continues running from the park while Nurse Song says she understands the situation and will request what Minghe asked. Minghe continues running at full speed, as he is still being pursued by the mutant Dr. Zhao. At this moment, someone watches Minghe running. It was Dr. Zhao watching Minghe while saying he really hoped he would be around there. Minghe notices that person looking at him and can't believe that Dr. Zhao has reached him. Zhao, observing from afar, catches Minghe's attention asking if he is okay. Without wasting time, Zhao points his finger upward and asks Minghe to look up just for a minute. Minghe sees that there are several people screaming at the top of the ride, asking Minghe for help. Zhao explains that on his way there, he bumped into those people and that he even wanted to kill them but decided to leave those people alive since he discovered that they are all friends of Minghe. Thus, they were worth more alive than dead. Minghe looks up and sees that it's Xiaodan, Lin, and Zheng who are at the top of the ride. The three, desperate, just ask Minghe to save them. Xing Hong, who is also on the ride, screams in desperation that he doesn't want to die yet. Xiaodan shouts to Minghe that the monster's target is him, so all four of them up there are innocent. Meanwhile, Lin urges Mingyi to escape as quickly as possible because he isn't strong enough to face that monster, as it is a general class monster. Mingyi looks up at the top of the ride, wondering what he can do in that situation. After all, he couldn't defeat mutant Zhao. Mingyi, looking at everyone on the ride, thinks that he doesn't care about leaving the three jerks behind, but he can't abandon Lin no matter what. Mingyi continues to observe mutant Zhao while thinking that he needs to buy as much time as possible until the officials arrive. Only then, everyone might get out alive. Mutant Zhao laughs and asks what the problem is. He also asks Mingyi if among the four on the ride there is someone important to him, since he isn't running away. Mutant Zhao looks up and tries to guess who this important person might be. He asks if it might be a girlfriend. After all, he doesn't need to guess since he knows who it is. Zhao looks at Lin and says that it's probably her since she was the one who asked Mingyi to flee. Lin, embarrassed by the monster's suggestion that she and Mingyi are a couple, says that's not it. She was just concerned for a classmate, that's all. Zhao laughs at the situation and asks Mingyi if it's worth risking his life for a classmate. Mingyi replies to Zhao that he would never understand. After all, there's a huge difference between people and animals. Zhao asks if he's really going to insult him by calling him an animal. Mingyi also laughs and says he remembers all that trash Zhao talked about in the underground, about futility. Mingyi says he found that hilarious. Mingyi says it's funny because, in the doctor's opinion, Life and humanity are diseases and cancerous cells that are taking advantage of the universe. Minghee picks up a leaf blowing in the wind and says that for him, the existence of life 
the appearance of humanity was responsible for not leaving the universe lonely. After all, life springs from the evolution of the universe. Zhao starts laughing crazily after hearing about life emerging from evolution. Zhao asks where humanity is even evolving. Minghe says that humanity is evolving in its ideologies and civilizations, not to mention the people themselves, since superhumans have also been born. Mutant Zhao responds that superhumans are just a disease with an improved defense system, nothing more, nothing less. Zhao fixes his gaze on Minghe, while saying that he even admits that some viruses are harder to eliminate than others. After all, this virus has abilities to become stronger, and thus evolve. Minghe feels a bit awkward, after all, that all fits well with him. Zhao continues to look at Minghe, while Minghe responds that each of them has a different point of view, so they won't get anywhere with this. However, there is an easier way for them to resolve that situation. Minghe says that whoever is stronger between the two is the one who is right. Minghe thinks and says there's only one problem with that. Minghe is a human who fits among these superhumans. But now what does Mutant Zhao represent after all? Mutant Zhao begins to get furious and says he represents the cosmic power of the universe, a cosmic power that will annihilate all humanity. Ming He, observing all that discourse, says that's fine. He then places his hand on the serum and says that, if defeated, Ming He will give that serum to Zhao without any problems. Mutant Zhao laughs while saying that Ming He really is an arrogant fool. Ming He tells Zhao that if he cannot defeat a mere student who couldn't even pass the test at the academy for superhumans, then he should stop brainwashing himself with such a foolish belief. Ming He, stressed, says that Zhao is nothing more than a failure, an animal, simply trash. Mutant Zhao, not in the mood for much conversation, responds that if Ming He doesn't hand over the serum soon, Zhao will simply kill all four people at the top of the ride. Ming He, full of confidence, says he can kill all of them. He further explains that all four are students of the Superhuman Academy. They all swore on their lives the moment they entered the Academy to protect the nation, cities, and citizens at all costs. With that said, it is very worthwhile to trade their lives for the safety of everyone in the city of Lanyang. Zhao, smiling, says that's fine then. He will kill everyone right now, he says this while growing large bones from his arm. He breaks one of the bones, which are quite sharp, and without even looking back, he throws the broken bone towards the people at the top of the ride. The bone flies at full speed and pierces through Zheng's leg. Everyone despairs upon seeing this. Zheng starts screaming and crying like mad, asking why he was attacked. Ming he just turns his back and starts to walk away. Zhao, smiling, picks another spiny bone and says this time he will aim right at his classmate's pretty face. Zhao then throws the bone with force towards Lin, hitting her squarely in the shoulder. Lin clutches her shoulder in pain, while Zhao just says that unfortunately, he missed again. Mingyi clenches his fists, still irritated, but begins to run away from there. Zhao can't believe what Mingyi is doing, and starts shouting that if he runs away again, he will turn all four on the ride into a sieve. He says this while furious, and holding several bones at the same time. Mingyi keeps running while people at the top of the ride scream for him to save them, and that they don't want to die. Mingyi just ignores everything and keeps running. Zhao starts to worry, since it will be quite problematic if Mingyi just keeps thinking about running away. Zhao then smiles, thinking that even though it's a waste of time, killing Minghe will definitely make him feel better. Minghe keeps running and several spikes appear in front of him. At this moment, Zhao shouts loudly that he accepts the terms. Minghe then stops in front of those spikes upon hearing Zhao say that. Minghe takes a deep breath and looks back towards Zhao. Zhao begins to mutate again, while raising his hand and going towards the ground, causing a huge explosion sending dust everywhere. Minghe protects himself from the flying boulders due to Zhao's strike on the ground. Zhao, now fully mutated, says that he accepts the duel against Minghe. However, the battle makes no sense if Minghe is going to keep running away all the time. There are several spikes around them, and Zhao says that now this will be the arena where they will battle, and each time Minghe steps out of the arena's boundary, Zhao will kill one of the four at the top, and he says he is not joking. Minghe, gathering energy in his body, says he accepts the conditions. Zhao, with his hands intertwined, says that if he loses the fight, naturally Minghe will be able to save them all. At this moment, a red bone starts to emerge from Zhao's body. Zhao, with an evil look, also says that of course Minghe will also become the great hero of the city if he manages to defeat mutant Zhao. Zhao starts spinning the red bone he pulled from his body while saying it's a shame Minghe is so weak. Zhao starts saying he heard comments that Minghe was hospitalized soon after not passing the test, since in the test he had gotten the rank White Dust, which is the worst of all. Zhao remembers Minghe hospitalized while saying that, apparently, he didn't face reality. 
and that's why he ended up in a coma, ending up in the hospital where Zhao worked. Zhao even mentions that he remembers Minghe lying under devices, and that, by a great coincidence, it was Zhao who performed all the surgery to save Minghe's life. Zhao, with an insane smile, says that from all this, Minghe is just a mere human who is a failure, who failed the exam to become a hunter. He says this while delivering a blow with the red bone, just grazing Minghe's head. Zhao still provokes, saying that no one expects much from him. Minghe's classmates also don't expect anything from him. Zhao, excited, prepares several sharp red bones while saying that Minghe's classmates laugh at him at his stupidity. Zhao says that no one cares about him except for the teacher who forced everyone to bring flowers to him. Zhao says this as he throws all those red bones at once. Minghe, silent, manages to dodge all the bones with extreme ease. Zhao, trying to shake Minghe, continues to launch several bones while saying that none of Minghe's classmates cared about him. After all, no one visited him throughout an entire year. Minghe continues trying to dodge the bones, some piercing his shirt. Zhao takes the opportunity to continue his provocation, saying that Minghe has lived a sad life up to that point. Another bone nearly hits his face, while Zhao still says that even with all this, Minghe wants to act arrogant, trying to be a hero. Lin, seeing all this, screams for Minghe to please run away. Minghe doesn't realize what's happening, but Zhao, in all his insanity, is already on top of him ready to deliver a fatal blow. Minghe jumps back with all his strength. However, he was hit in his chest, which starts bleeding quite a bit. Zhao just stands in front of Minghe. Lin begins to cry, asking Minghe to run away while it's still possible. Minghe is on his knees, bleeding heavily. He then gets up while pressing his wound to try to stop the bleeding a bit. Mutant Zhao, with an insane appearance, begins to lick Minghe's blood off his weapon and asks Minghe why he resists so much. After all, he should have died on the operating table a year ago. Zhao starts running towards Minghe while saying that even if he awakens at that moment, nothing will change. Minghe then prepares himself and looks at those spikes surrounding him. However, he starts to remember that Zhao made it clear that if Minghe steps out of the arena's boundaries, he will kill all of Minghe's classmates. And this was no joke. Zhao gets even closer to deliver the final blow while taunting Minghe, saying he shouldn't even exist in that world. Minghe keeps holding his chest while a lot of blood flows onto his hand. Mutant Zhao, now with a frenetic smile, delivers his last attack telling Minghe to die once and for all. Minghe throws his blood-filled hand into Mutant Zhao's eyes, causing him to have to close his eyes. Minghe takes the chance and jumps away from Mutant Zhao, while he screams in hatred calling Minghe a filthy rat. Minghe breaks his jump. Zhao tries to look back, but can't open his eyes. Minghe starts moving towards Zhao, and delivers a powerful punch to his head, while still accumulating a huge amount of energy in his blood-covered fists, and saying that Zhao is filthy trash, a disgusting and despicable person. Minghe's fists are covered in blood, and because of this, Minghe observes that his own blood is one of the best supports for the fist technique. He says this right after delivering that blow to Zhao, saying that the blow was from the bloodthirsty demon fists. Mutant Zhao is thrown onto his own spikes, piercing his entire body. The people at the top of the ride start screaming, saying that Minghe was incredible, but he should hurry up and kill the mutant once and for all. Zheng, in shock, cries and begs Minghe to save him first at all costs, because his blood is drying up, so he will undoubtedly die. Xiaodan watches everyone there crying and says that Mingyi is clearly bleeding more than him, so clearly Zheng is just a coward. Lin, also crying a lot, asks Mingke to take care of his own wounds first, since it's obvious he's bleeding a lot. At that moment, a bone falls to the ground while someone says that those people are very noisy. It was Zhao, who was pulling out the bones that had pierced his body. He removes them while saying that after finishing with Mingke, he will tear all those fearful rats to pieces. Everyone at the top of the ride is speechless, terrified by that threat. Mutant Zhao finally stands up while removing the last bone that pierced his body. He asks Minghe if his fists are the talent of the advanced evolution he possesses. Minghe hears this and immediately delivers another powerful punch to the face of Mutant Zhao, not giving him time to defend himself. Zhao just turns his face as he takes the blow and says that it seems the fists are indeed very strong. However, Zhao then moves his neck and says that despite being strong, they are completely useless. Zhao also remembers that during Minghe's battle with the demonic rat on the stone bridge, he used his flaming fists. He begins to recall the entire fight that Minghe had against the demonic rat. While Zhao was thinking about this, Minghe was gathering more and more energy in his fist, which was still under the effect of his blood. After gathering a lot of energy, he begins to deliver dozens of punches all over mutant Zhao's body. 
one punch stronger than the other, until he finishes his last blow by putting all his strength into it. Zhao starts to be thrown away and slides to the other side of the arena. Mutant Zhao, after receiving all those punches, tells Mingyi that it appears he is capable of absorbing different supports, producing different effects on his punches. Zhao finds that power extraordinary. Zhao starts to clean himself up, already healed from the blows, while saying that this is not enough to kill a leader rank like him. Xing Hong, observing Zhao say all this, asks Xiao Dan if the talent of advanced evolution Mingyi has isn't an invisible power of white dust rank. Moreover, his other power is pure luck, and that can't be used in battle. Xiao Dan replies that he has no idea about any of that. The only certainty is that Mingyi is stronger than all of them up there. Xiao Dan shouts to Mingyi, asking him to use even more of his strength, and with that, he will kill that monster. Mutant Zhao begins to walk towards Mingye, and as he approaches him, says that he is leveraging the strength of a leader rank monster at that very moment, not the strength of a cockroach or worm that Mingye killed. He also says that with those mediocre fists alone, it will not be possible to win that battle. Zhao also says that this feeling of clearly giving your best and still losing must be very unpleasant. Zhao raises his arms excitedly and says that as extraordinary as Minghe may be, he continues to be very weak. Having said that, how would he want to compare himself to a perfect body like Zhao's? Zhao then raises his hand while Minghe just stands there doing nothing. He then closes his hand, saying that Minghe is not the only one who has strong fists. Minghe opens his eyes expecting Zhao to attack him. Zhao, without wasting time, throws a punch towards Minghe. Minghe also delivers a punch to block the punch coming his way. However, the impact of the punch was so strong that it threw Mingyi several meters back. Mutant Zhao does not waste time and starts running at full speed towards Mingyi. He begins to deliver countless attacks, while Mingyi alternates between dodging and blocking the attacks as best he can. Mingyi is thrown back amid the dust raised by Zhao's strikes. At that moment, Mingyi imagines that as soon as Mutant Zhao began using his fists, his speed increased significantly. The dust remains dense until Zhao emerges from it, going towards Minghe to deliver another powerful punch. He lands the punch squarely on Minghe's belly, which he couldn't dodge this time. The punch was so strong that it sent Minghe flying far away. Zhao, smiling for having the upper hand in the fight, tells Minghe to be careful with what comes next. At that moment, spikes start to emerge from Zhao's body. The spikes grow larger until all of them are fired towards Minghe. The spikes speed towards Minghe while he just crosses his arms trying to defend himself in case any hit him. Mutant Zhao can't believe it, as several bones flew towards Minghe, yet none hit him even though he didn't move. Minghe then falls to the ground, and feels relieved that he wasn't pierced by any of those bones. Zhao starts to smile as he pulls another bone from his body, remembering another extraordinary talent that Minghe has, which is luck. Zhao says it doesn't matter anymore, since Minghe is hanging by a thread. All Zhao needs to do is deliver just one more attack, and even if Minghe survives, he will probably be crippled by this next attack. Zhao praises, saying that this luck talent is really quite useful. Zhao then pulls a huge bone from his arm and aims it at Mingyi's classmates, saying he wants to see if they are as lucky as Mingyi. Desperate, Mingyi yells at Zhao asking what he is doing. After all, they had an agreement. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon, and like the video. Thank you.